market, but let's uh, talk about the big deals that have happened in the banking space. Axis Bank last week sealed the deal to acquire Citi's consumer business in India for 11,600 crores. This move brings 3 million Citi customers into the Axis fold. To discuss in detail on this deal and their business outlook, we have Amitabh Chaudhary, the MD and CEO of Axis Bank, joining us now. And we have Lata in the studio as well to take us through the discussion. Mr. Chaudhary, before I hand it over to Lata, uh, congratulations on this deal going through in entirety. Just wanted some you know, um, details on the way forward. Now, you would have allocated about 11,500 crores plus about 1,500 crores of integration expenses. So on this 16,500 crores in total, can you tell us when do you expect to generate that 18% ROE that you had spoken about earlier? <clears throat> well, you know, when we had bid for the deal, obviously we had gone through all these calculations. City franchise is a 120 years old franchise and an affluent franchise of this caliber is not an offer for sale regularly in any marketplace. And it would have taken many years for access to build. So this, we believe, is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The valuations, whichever way you cut it, at 17.7 to 18.7 times uh, profits remains very, very competitive. If you look at similar listed businesses in the credit card and the wealth management space, which is the big part of what we're really buying, it will be obvious to everyone that we're not overpaid at all. Uh, actually, our prices are very, very uh, much in zone of what the kind of market caps of some of these companies are. Uh, even though the city deposit franchise is only 4.5% of our franchise, I think uh, we should note that it accelerates our journey, improving the quality of the overall combined liability franchise of the two entities put together. It's clearly visible with 10% improvement in our CASA market share. We will improve our overall CASA ratio by 1.5% and so on and so forth. So, I mean, I can go into more details, but at, at a summary level, I do want to say that the deal is well-priced. If you look at, uh, you know, the uh, kind of uh, similar uh, rated companies in the marketplace, if you look at what the opportunity is in terms of the synergy benefits we can derive from this franchise, we've already identified 60 various initiatives which we'll you know, obviously intend to work on over the next 12 to 18 months. We can take access products to city customers and some of the city's best practices to access customers. And we believe that the combination of two will add a huge amount of value. Also, please understand that there are a huge amount of cost benefits that can come to us through this deal because the city bank franchise was being obviously debited with global costs, both for the corporate overhead and technology support. Uh, you mentioned the 1,500 crores as uh, the amount of money we'll spend in transition. But once that goes away, uh, the benefits we can get in terms of reduced costs also will feed into the overall profitability of the franchise. So we are very delighted. We are also delighted by the fact that uh, we closed the transaction one month earlier than what we had anticipated. 97% uh, of the employees have come into the fold of access. I think the initial feedback I'm getting over the first day of the joining, which was March 1st, is extremely positive, extremely good. I think our, both the teams from City and our side work very hard to make it happen. A lot of work left, a lot of execution left, but the first you know, steps have been quite positive and I'm quite hopeful that we'll be able to continue to execute well as we move forward on this deal. Oh, uh, of course, uh, Amitabh, it would be great. Uh, after all, so many people vied for that piece, so it should be great to have it. But, uh, you know, uh, you all were looking to see how many people will stay back uh, uh, at Access, and I believe there is some 19% fall in cards, 33% in the wealth AUM. Uh, now, does the 6% fall in the cost that you were given measure up? Uh, I, I, couldn't you have got a little more in terms of a cost cut? So, Latav, very, very fair question. So, I'll give you a slightly longer answer. Just bear with me. Firstly, we've been consistently communicating the day this transaction happened that we expected natural attrition in the numbers due to the extended period from divestiture announcement or divestiture announcement by City of his India consumer business and closure of the transaction. So, they announced it in April 2021, and we have closed mm. the transaction on March 2023. There was obviously also a requirement for express consents across liability products. So only on the express consent of the customer, we, they have been migrated to access. And obviously, there is a change in business cycle from diligence period to closure. Please recall that when they shared the data with us as of June 2021, India was just coming out of the delta wave of COVID. So the deposits in the system were high. So when we bid for the transaction and when we uh, kind of applied a price to it, we had taken all this into account. We had taken into okay. account attrition. We had taken into account the express consent. So firstly, the price builds in all this. We have taken a uh, two-pronged approach to correctly address this aforementioned risk. We factored the above upfront in our initial valuation in bid. And to protect ourselves further, 
we built a price adjustment mechanism as part of the transaction. So what you're seeing is that the upfront valuation had attrition built in, and then over and above that, we had a further protection, and that protection has led into a lower price uh, for us. But just to give you a sense, uh, the portfolio quality has remained strong because express consent is built in. There is 36% improvement in average monthly spends per credit card in January 23 as compared to June 21. Similarly, on the deposit size, average deposit per account improving by 13% over the same period. Uh, so indicating that what we are onboarding, even it's an effluent franchise, we are uh, onboarding even a further effluent part of the franchise uh, into access. So we are happy with where we are. I think it's very much in line as I, we have been consistently saying through this transaction that's very much in line with what we expected. And that's where we have ended up. Okay, no, that's a fair point. The, it's express consent, so that's very big. And it's super affluent, I would assume. So uh, that should mean uh, more returns uh, to the bank. But your capital goes down to 13.8% uh, from 156 right? Uh, of course, way yes. above the regulatory requirement, but uh, will you be raising capital sometime soon, like in a year? So we have been... Uh, we don't need any capital to pay for this deal. This will be funded entirely from the existing balance sheet. Our capital adequacy position remains strong. So as of December, uh, you know, 2022, we were at 19.51, uh, you know, car, which is capital adequacy ratio, and CT1 ratio, which is what people focus more on, was at 15.55%. We have net accreted 31 basis points of CT1 capital in the first nine months of this year. So the purchase will, consideration and the assets required will consume 177 basis points of CD1 capital. So we'll end up at 13.78. Mm. Given our operating performance and post-acquisition capital position, we believe we have sufficient capital to fund organic growth of our existing required business for a period. We have significant amount of flexibility. And I want to say it very categorically, we are in absolutely no hurry to go and approach the markets anytime soon. Okay, okay. Uh, what about Bain? You heard anything from them? Uh, uh, they are not uh, trying to cash out or anything, are they? I cannot speak on their behalf. The only thing I can say is that the Bain, when they did the transaction with us, had a right to uh, be on our board for a certain period of time. That right expired last year. We have extended it further mm -hmm. because they wanted to stay on the board and we believe they were contributing at the board level. Uh, beyond that, they have the right to sell. And if their shareholding comes down below a certain level, uh, they obviously lose, they lose their position on the board, but at the end of the day, they are a venture capital firm who needs to provide a return to their uh, partners. So we fully understand and appreciate it. Uh, okay. So kind of ultimately, it's Bain's call. Of course. Uh, well, to come back to the uh, major business, uh, you know, right now you will have to report a loss, right, because of the write-off of uh, Goodwill for Q4. Yes, you're absolutely right that uh, as we have again consistently disclosed that we will take a one-time charge to the PNL in this quarter, goodwill and other intangible prudent amortization, policy harmonization costs and provisions, and implementation expenses. So there will be a one-time impact. See, now I just want to emphasize policy, harmonization costs, and other prudent provisions are largely non-cash and prudent. It should not be automatically implied that this will result in an economic loss to the bank. These are just provisions being created. Absolutely. Also, it is pertinent to note that the extent accounting standards permit amortization of goodwill and other intangibles mm -hmm. over a period of time. We, as an institution, have decided to amortize this 100% in year one because we believe that is the right thing to do uh, and enables the bank to retain operating flexibility like payments of dividends, etc. So we are taking a more conservative approach. We intend to write it off one at one go in this quarter and uh, you know look forward to obviously uh, focusing on uh, getting the value out of this acquisition over a period of time and as quickly as possible. Okay. I, no, I read several analyst reports and the crux is that they have cut your current year's profit by 50%, obviously because of uh, your upfront uh, uh, amortization. But people are raising your, uh, you know, they already have built in a profit growth, but they've raised it by between 3 and 5% because of the deal. Fair point, fair analysis? Well, our initial current estimates of 800 to 842 crores of profit in the city business, which we gave in March of last year, we have maintained it uh, in spite of you mentioned that in some cases the business has fallen or size of deposits has come down. We believe that uh, there are, firstly, the business inherently remains that profitable. Secondly, we are working on cost and revenue synergies. And we believe that over a period of time, this should help us to increase profitability of the combined franchise. So, yeah, I mean, people obviously are looking at our statements. 
We are normally quite conservative with what we say. And we have just said that we maintain the 800 to 842 crores profit of this franchise as it stands today. Obviously, the 60 plus synergy benefits I've talked about, if they play out and they play out well, uh, the combined profitability of the franchise will go over even further. Okay. Well, uh, just to come back to the main business, uh, there is, of course, uh, an expectation that our Reserve Bank is likely to raise yet again in April. <clears throat> and, of course, global rates, uh, uh, Powell is talking about uh, not just higher for longer, but probably at a faster clip. So even if 50 bips can't be ruled out, uh, will NIM speak off? So, Lada, if you recall, whenever I've talked to you, I've always said that the macro is too volatile and what we believe today seems to change tomorrow. So, if you recall, just a couple of months back, all of us were saying, okay, rate cycle is coming to an end and things are going to be look positive from here. Look at how things have changed in the last couple of months. And I think as uh, financial institutions, as an economy, we have to be very, very cautious because a lot of things are not in our hands. And you referred to the statement uh, uh, the Chairman Powell has made and he seems to be talking about rapid hikes and larger hikes because inflation is just not going away. And you're hearing the same statement coming from, uh, you know, Europe too, that where they're talking about, uh, you know, further hikes and they're saying that inflation is just taking time to go away. Uh, so my worry and uh, is that obviously it will have an impact on India. And if beyond a certain interest rate, India's GDP growth rate potentially could get impacted. So we have to be very, very watchful. We have said, as far as NIM is concerned, now coming back to the, the question which you have asked, mm. we have reached an all-time high on our NIMS last quarter and that has been after obviously a, a lot of uh, effort from our side so we reached 4.26 growing 73 percent 73 uh, basis points here and year and 30 basis points quarter and quarter now we do expect liability and deposit costs to increase over the next few quarters with limited compensation from asset repricing uh, we have always guided the market that we would like to have our nim above 3.8 percent which gives us a cushion of 41 basis points uh, over our structure medium term name expectations our endeavor having reached where we have reached we will be to will be to ensure and work towards retaining as much of that cushion as possible uh, there are two to three two of the three drivers in journey which we have an ability to control and should serve us as some off offset to the rate pressure and they are the product mix within the product mix of wholesale and retail which are some of the assets we can push we still have a pretty large RIDF portfolio. We still we can work on ensuring that the outflow on our deposits continues to come down. So we have some levers we can work on. So on one side, while there'll be deposit repricing, on the other side, we are hoping that we can continue to work on some of those other factors and variables and ensure that this cushion is maintained or kept as much as possible to, uh, close to 41 basis points as is where we stand today. Okay. Uh, just one follow-up, Mr. Chaudhary, there. Uh, how much do you think the margins will fall in Q4 since deposit rates have gone up so much? You're talking about the loan growth? Uh, no, no, no margins, margins. 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 Yeah, so I'm not I'm not commenting on the margins at all. I think I'll let me repeat what I'm saying. We are at net off, one off, we are at 4.21%. As a bank, as an institution, we'll work very hard to maintain this 41 basis points cushion, that is up to about 3.8%, and try to keep it in that zone as much as possible. What way will we end up with? I mean, wish we knew what was going to happen tomorrow. We still have quite a few days left in this month. A uh, lot of uh, advances and disbursements do happen in this month. So let's wait and watch in April, and we'll share with you as to where we end up. Okay. All the very best, uh, uh, Amitabh, for this uh, deal and for uh, the coming years. Uh, we will take a rain check with you for a more thorough interview later. This one was consumed by City. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lata. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Good to see all right, thanks a lot, Lata, for uh, joining in. And that's uh, Amitabh Chaudhary talking about uh, the city deal and the kind of expectations that he has uh, from the overall business and the industry going forward. Let's slip into a quick break. When we come back, we will be speaking to the management of CAMS. Uh, Anuj Kumar, who is the managing director of CAMS, will do discuss their acquisition of a little over 55% stake in Think Analytics. And later in our special segment, Charting Trends, Mitesh will join in to help decode the technical trends of the market for the slightly longer term. We'll talk about some stocks as well. Do stay tuned in for that.